Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for Wealth Press. Today's Wednesday, it's June 22nd. The market's gonna open up in a little bit less than two hours and about an hour and 54 minutes to be exact with you. And I like to be as exact as possible. The Dow Jones is down about 324 points. The Nasdaq's down 161, and the S&P is meeting us halfway in between. Um, not too unexpected in light of the fact that the market was just on fire yesterday. I don't remember how much we gained, but I know we gained substantially more than what we're down right now. Let's just take a quick look. Now, so the S&P closed up yesterday, 2.52%. It's down 1.24%. So it's, uh, it's, actually, it's actually down only about half, literally about half of what it lost yesterday. And when markets open down, it's actually a pretty positive sign. I'm, I get much more nervous when markets are opening higher. Now, this week, we've got the uh, Fed committee talking all week, literally, the Fed market meeting committee, committee's meeting. We got Thomas, uh, Thomas Barker speaking yesterday. Today, we've got Mr. I can't predict the future. Oh, wait till I can. Oh, no, I'll wait till I get reelected to really tell people what I'm thinking. This guy is a sly fox politician. Notice how much his tone has changed about transitory versus non-transitory after he got reelected. Uh, don't get me started. But um, anyhow, anyhow, today is, what is today? Today is Wednesday. Yesterday, we had uh, existing home sales. Today, we've got Mr. Jerome Powell speaking everybody's watching the bond market looking at the bond market what's interesting and i've been i've been kind of talking a little bit about this if you look at the bond market it's starting to take on a slightly different less less um the the, the directional bias notice right here notice it's about I don't know, 60 degrees, 55 degrees here. And notice we're getting a lot more choppier and we're having a harder time going south. This area right here is very, very interesting actually because notice we're, st we're hanging out this area. We're not going lower. If we can stay in this area and come back into this area, that would signify, signify that the bond market is done, at least for now, going down. And if we can get choppy, that means the worst could potentially be behind us. Um, Keep your eye on the bond market today, very, very significant. And Mr. Powell is speaking at 9.30 in the morning. And Thomas Barkin is speaking before the market's opening. And Charles Evans, anyway, it'll be very interesting. What you wanna get is their tone, is their sentiment. Are they um, starting to talk better going forward? Are they looking at rainbows or are they looking at uh, dragons? You know, <laughs> that's how you gotta look at it. There's only, there's only two ways of looking at it. Are they, are they saying the worst may be priced into the market? the worst may be behind us, or are they saying, hey, um, you know, things are getting worse than we expected. Remember something, all this data that you're seeing, there's like a six to nine month back lag, like back lag, not leg, lag. There's a back lag. And uh, a lot of the things that we're seeing now could already be priced into the market. And one of the benefits of the market is it knows that and prices everything in ahead of time. So keep your eye on the bond market, and if it starts moving higher, that's a good sign that the Fed, that the, that the market participants believe the Fed is overdone, which is very, very significant. Let's talk a little bit about global economy. Not much news there. Congressional testimony by Federal Chair Jerome Powell today. That's what I, that's what I was talking about right here. Um, Investors are worried about the Fed risk slowing economic growth too much and bringing on a recession. As I mentioned several, several times, it's a balancing act. What Powell will tell Congress on Wednesday is the first of two-day testimony as part of the Central Bank's semi-annual monetary report. Investors are very cautiously looking for that. The worries over inflation and interest rates have been worsened by a spike in energy prices, followed by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's a, it's a triple whammy. And then COVID is coming up again, you know, from what I'm hearing and seeing around here. Prices of crude oil are 52% this year, and there's no end in sight. Last week, the Fed hiked its key short-term rate by triple the usual amount. They went 0.75 instead of 0.25. It has also begun allowing some of the trillions of dollars that they've been putting into the market to roll off the balance sheet. That would put upwards pressure on long-term interest rates and another way to put uh, pressure on the market, but it's another way to bolster the economy, something that uh, Asia is not doing. They're letting rates stay low. Uh, Fed's move is happening as some discouraging signals have emerged including 
sagging spending at retailers, soured consumer sentiment, which is awful now. The Fed could consider another such mega hike at its next meeting in July. But Powell has increased, said increase of three quarters of a percentage points would not be uncommon. I would imagine so. So that's what's priced into the market right now. But, uh, but again, I believe the market is forward thinking and is pricing most of it in. Volatility still, still, even though the market made a new lower low, volatility did not. So till I see volatility breaking above this level right here, the 37 level, I will believe the market will sag and volatility will come. I mean, volatility will sag and the market will strengthen out. As far as sectors, and this is something really important. If you notice yesterday, five days, let's look at five days. Look at what's leading, guys. I mean, I I'm sorry, I'm not making this up, but look, you've got, you've got the most speculative sectors leading and we're entering a very, very bullish part of the economic cycle. The last week of June, and the first week of July. That's That tends to be a, a 70, 75% chance bullish odd over the last 30 years. Energy, look at this, last five days, information, consumer, the three most speculative sectors are leading and the three most or two most, aside from consumer staples, but material is pretty basic too, is, uh, is falling. Now, over a month basis, over a one month basis, you, you're kind of seeing a mixed market. But again, look at consumer discretionary, look at information technology, look at communication services. They're starting to come up. And when you look at the heat map over a month, I wanted you guys to see this. While there's a lot of defensive stuff here, like transports, um, banks, but you've also got drugs. Drugs are coming in here. Computer integrated systems are coming in here. And if you look at the worst stocks over the last month, look at this, look at this, energy, energy, oil, energy. So there's something for sure going on. The, the question is, is it going to sustain itself or not? So my biggest factor right now is, and this is what you need to be paying attention to, we need to look at price action. So the market's right here, it's at the dumps. There's a good chance we could just kind of drift around here and move sideways to sideways, or there's a chance we can move higher. But with the markets near very, very long-term lo long support area, I actually think we're gonna have a little swing up here, um, especially, especially in the small caps, which are starting their rebalancing for the year. I don't know if you guys know this, but the Russell has a rebalancing for the year, and that's coming up this uh, next week, last week of um, of June, and that tends to cause the market to rally. So I am actually starting to get more bullish than ever because of what I'm seeing in the market. I'm starting to see the bond market become more choppier and less directional. I'm seeing volatility not make new highs. I'm seeing Russell 2000 starting to diverge and it's starting to outperform the S&P 500. I'm also starting to see energy stocks lag behind, which is not a, not a good sign right now. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is a major, major turnaround. With that said, we have to stick with the strongest sectors longer term and fade the weaker ones. And the strongest has been the commodity sector. And again, commodity isn't just energies. And we've been going down, we're at the 50 day moving average. We could go a little bit lower. We recommended this at 4.6, uh, April 6. And uh, we went we went from 26 all the way to 30, 31-ish around there. And now we're back at 28. And I think we're gonna go up for another, uh, another run up. So I do like what I'm seeing here. And I would be buying the DB commodity index because I don't think commodities are done. I think we've got more, a lot more inflationary pressure on the way but the market may be assimilating it, so the trend may not be as strong. But I do like what we're seeing right now. And on an RSI, on a five-day basis, let's see here. Yeah, we are, we're way, way overdone, way, way overdone. So this may not be the worst asset to invest in. In terms of the short side, we've got Herbalife. Oh, I mean, this is just an awful company. Uh, the low is 19 something, we're at 23. I think we're just gonna come right back down. So to the long side, we've got DBC, and to the short side, we've got Herbalife. Now, before I let you go, folks, I got something to tell you. I've been working on a brand new way to trade the stock market for the past six months. When, th when things started getting dicey in January, I set out to optimize 64 secret market patterns that date back to the 18th century. 
with the idea of trading stocks without having to worry about the stock itself. That's right. That means no fundamental analysis or technical indicators. I don't care if markets are bullish, bearish, if they're going down or up, it makes no difference to me. Now, I'm still wrapping up the final stages of the testing process before I go public with this breakthrough, but there's a few spots left and we just hit our fourth trade and we just closed it out for a winner. So we've had four for four. I mean, obviously it's not 30 years of, uh, of, of trades, but it's a good start, especially in this crazy market. So follow the link below, secure your spot now before it's too late. We've literally have like four spots left. I'm not kidding, like four or five spots, something like that, something ridiculous. Tomorrow, don't miss out. I'll talk about my top ETF and I'll give you a top option pick to go with it. Not bad, right? But right now markets are going through something. I'm hoping the bottom is here. We'll have more information as the Fed continues speaking, but uh, pay attention, the market's down pretty good today. But I like down markets because they tend to rally after this, uh, they tend to rally as the day goes on. So follow the link below, check out Pattern Trader. Find out how I was able to get four by four winners, four out of four winners. Not bad in this crazy market, right? Have a great day, send me some love letters, comment on the videos, and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys, have a great, great day. Stay out of trouble out there. That Jerome Powell, he's unhinged. <laughs> Can you imagine Jerome Powell being unhinged? Bye guys, I'll see you later.